No. Do you, do you usually, uh, you've been doing a film here for a while. You're doing a film on the, uh, the Carter Fold and everything. Do you, do you still feel uncomfortable, you know, being under lights? No, and, I don't feel uh, uncomfortable well, good, at all. Good. That's, that makes it a lot easier for me. No, it's, I'm just as, as at ease as I can be. Uh, terrific. Okay, you got, you got a picture? I've already got it rolling. Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk to you. There's three or four things that really struck my attention when I was down here the last time. And uh, one thing, I, I, I really find it remarkable that you all got this uh, music center here now. Uh, how did that come about? You mean how did I start? Right. How did you start? Well, you know, I started in a little store in, um, in 1974 mm -hmm. having music shows in the store building. Well, I decided, um, I really decided that we needed something here in the valley where Mother and Daddy Maybell come from. This is where they started from, you know. And uh, the idea come to me, well, why didn't I put on music shows? I was working at the school as a cook and I wasn't making a whole lot of money. I'm still not making a whole lot of money. But I didn't go into it for the money part. I just, um, I kept thinking about uh, when I was small and growing up, uh, people would gather around in the home and they would have music. Well, I was, I grew up in music, you know. That I was surrounded by it. And uh, of course, they was, uh, there was music around their home and sitting on the porch and this and that almost all time because Mother and Daddy Maybell were rehearsing songs to record. Mm -hmm. Way back when I was a child, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, entertainment about all you, where you had to go to was to church, mm -hmm. and uh, the church was mostly the center of the community or an ice cream supper mm -hmm. or, or go to someone's house to listen to music or watch them play. I mean, not listen. That was even before the radio come along. And uh, I guess I would just, as I get older, I guess you go back to thinking about things in your childhood. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, why not have a music show? At one time, my daddy wanted to start a park. Well, he did start a little park over here in back of me, back over in the mountains. Mm -hmm. But the idea fell through. It's, he started it at a time when uh, they wasn't, it was during a, depression and during a hard time and he was older and he was in bad health and he didn't have the well he just didn't have the money and the the ability and he just wasn't strong enough at that time to do it he waited too late in life but he really that was his he wanted to do that and I guess that was always in the back of my mind that he would like to have a place for other musicians to come in and put on a music show. So when the idea come to me, I thought, well, clean out the store. I didn't have anything. I just have one acre of land mm -hmm. here. This is a little house and a little store building. Hit it one time was a grocery store, you know. Right. Years ago, my daddy had a grocery store there. But it was abandoned. It was full of old furniture. It was full of tobacco stalks where they worked off tobacco. It was just cluttered. And it was just going to waste. And the idea occurred to me, why didn't I do something with the building? The first thought that come to my mind was an auction, but I didn't know nothing about an auction. So I did know a little something about music. And I said, well, we'll clean it out and we'll put in some bleachers and I'll run some ads in the paper, call them up and tell them what I want to do. And I booked in or brought in some artists, and uh, so it started. When I first started, my hit was just, the first year I just had a, a show every first and, uh, every second and fourth Saturday night, I think it was. And then uh, it done so well that I went from there to having it once a week, every Saturday night, which people says, you, you, have, you have too much music, it won't work, it did work. It did work. And so uh, we went on from there till uh, 
For two years, from 74 to 76, I worked by myself in the little store building. Of course, I wouldn't say I was by by myself. Ever so often, my brother Joe would come by. And my mother was in. She would come down. She really took an interest in it. You know, she was getting older, and it seemed to please her that there was something of being put in here. To un the, the whole idea behind the whole thing is to honor my daddy, mother, and Maybelle, mm -hmm. and to preserve the kind of music that they'd done. They didn't, you know the kind of music the Carter family sung and played. Back when they made music, they didn't even have the microphones. Mm -hmm. They didn't make any money because it was at a time when there wasn't no money. But they didn't do it for the money alone. They'd done it because they, they wanted to do it. They love music. Well, when they did get into it, even if it was in the Depression, they made more money than that than they made at trying to get your living out of a farm, right. which is very hard. And uh, I wanted to carry on their work. Now, of course, it was Maybell, Mother, and Daddy. When the Carter family, the original Carter family, broke up, they peace on Maybell. Well, Maybell and her daughters, of course, they went on to Nashville, they went to Richmond, they went to Missouri, they went to the Grand Ole Opry. But their style changed. Mm -hmm. They were still the, they took, after Daddy's death, they had the name, the Carter family. Well, they had to change their style. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a man in it. Daddy's place to fulfill the base. Mm -hmm. And they really had to change it, I suppose. How but, do you feel about that? Well, I, I like my kind of music right. the best. Mm -hmm. I like this kind. I like the kind of original sound. Mm -hmm. I really do. They uh, had to change. They moved into a big city, into a city life. They moved out of the country. They had to change their music to fit in. That's pretty. Th that's the way I see it. Right. And uh, I know that to keep going what I want to do, I know that it would never uh, make a lot of money because old-time music is something that is going to, it's, a being, it's revived it a whole lot, mm -hmm. but it was a thing that was just about a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. They come along with the electric instruments, they come along with all the big TV programs and this and that. and. You know, um, it's to the point, or it was to the point, that about all anybody ever done was turn on a TV. Mm -hmm. And people, about all they knowed about a musician was the one that come out of Nashville. Right. They are others. Believe me, they are others. Right. And uh, some of the better known musicians have never went to the top. They've never been known because they've never been found. And uh, there's a world of them in Scott County. Yeah, that's there's a the world truth. of them in Scott County. And uh, <coughs> if it would help encourage anybody, we all can't be big, well-paid stars. We all mm -hmm. can't be famous. But there is uh, all of them, most of them, well, I say all of them, that makes music. They love music or they wouldn't be a playing a guitar right. or an order harp. They love that, and everybody is not in it. It's wonderful to make money, but I think when you go way up into that higher bracket, you lose that something. Mm -hmm. You concentrate more on, well, the money. You may change or do this. To, well, I can make more money to do this. I would like to make more money than what I do, but I won't change my style. I see a big contrast between like this side of the family and the side that's in Nashville with, uh, well, not only just your immediate family, but your in-laws, people like Rodney Crow, uh, you've got the cash side of it and everything. It seems like there's a real difference between what they're doing and what you're doing here. Well, as I say, there it's a, it's a time and the place and they're in a different place, and I'm in the valley. They're in Nashville. Let's put it that way. But they, uh, 
there's no um, friction or no jealousy or nothing. Mm -hmm. We're just as close, I think, closer than we ever was in our life. And they will help me do anything they can, just like I would help them. And they, they appreciate what I'm doing. I appreciate what they're doing. And uh, there's nothing, nothing, no friction, no jealousy. But I'm just trying to preserve what I'm trying to preserve and what they've got done preserved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's done very well. So. <laughs> it's preserved, you know. Well, there is one person that you will let play electric instruments on your stage here. And that's Johnny Cash. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't for Johnny, I couldn't carry on through the winter months. As you know, I have to have something to fall back on. Through the summer months, my program <coughs> goes along good. But I have a big overhead. I have a big mm -hmm. building. I have to. It takes several people to keep this going down here, and uh, with his help, I have something to fall back on during the winter months because I don't have a lot of parking. I don't. Um, in the winter months, you can't find a place to park. The roads are icy. Mm -hmm. My crowds is going to drop off. Naturally, mm -hmm. they're going right. to drop off. But I never did want to shut my building down during the winter months. If you shut down, you lose interest. Right. I started out to keep going, so why shouldn't I keep going? What about these? Uh, I've heard so much about these Scott County fiddle players and all these good musicians up here. Uh, could you they tell me They are wonderful. They, we've got some here that are just fantastic. Take Beecher Smith. I've never seen anybody, never seen anybody to equal Beecher. Right. I've seen probably better fiddlers. But he, they've not got that style. Mm -hmm. They've not got that approach on stage or that old-time sound. Well, he can sing, too, can he? he? He has got a voice. It's just unbelievable. Yeah, there is a lot of musicians are, and uh, good musicians in Scott County. How's, how's Beecher doing? Is not good. Not good. I don't, not too good. Uh, they is good people in, this, in, uh, in the hills of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And they really, they really help. They really fall right in there. There's something about the, there's something about the mountain people that's not other people. Yeah. You know? I know. I yeah, know. there's something about it. Yeah. And they, they'll help you. They'll, they'll share with you. They'll, well, they've still got that closeness. Mm -hmm. You, you can understand when you get in the city and the busy life and this why. You've not got time to to worry with this, and you've not got time to worry about your neighbor. We've got away from that a whole lot as uh, we get older, I guess. People are, are not as, but as I said, that that's what it is. That's your TV. Mm -hmm. That's all the different things that you have. But this little music is something that is something that was in the past. And it, it it brings out your old people. They want to go back. They want to, they want to live again their childhood. Mm -hmm. When you get older, uh, I wouldn't for the life of me ever want to go back and go th live my life over. I've had too hard a time. Mm -hmm. But they some of the memories that I had when I was a child I'm, that'll never go away. I want to keep that very very close. What was it like when you were a child? What your family? as much as anybody else, more than anybody else, started country music. I mean, uh, well, they started, done their part. They, they, they certainly uh, did more than their part, yeah. I would think. Uh, I mean, when scholars look back now at the beginnings of country music, they were like the, <coughs> the beginning of the modern era of country music where they started recording that kind of music and started popularizing it and everything. What was it like growing up around that? Well, I didn't think anything about it. I mean, you know, that was just, I just growed up like that. Um, my family and them, they, uh, they wasn't as famous then as they are now. Mm -hmm. Nobody is as famous alive as they are after they die. Right. And uh, it was just, it was just natural for me to know that they, that they was music there. I just accepted that. And it was hard in a way. I got I got tired, really, when I was a young girl. My mother and daddy was gone a whole lot. 
they was gone to make on a music show or they had gone to record and it, it wasn't as hectic as I imagine that children of uh, musicians is now. They're, they're, they was turned over to probably babysitters and this and that. Well, we was turned over some, but it was to Grandma or mm -hmm. it was to Gladys and my older sister. But, but there's something about um, being a child of a musician or of a famous family. You feel like sometimes that their music comes before you, mm -hmm. let's put it that way. Right. And I, I look back now, I see it different. Mm -hmm. I see that they was, uh, they was trying to, what the, they was trying to do, they was trying to, my daddy was trying to make a living. Mm -hmm. And he, he loved music. I believe he loved music and more than any one man I ever knowed of. Mm -hmm. And um, they were Christian people. They were good people. And uh, it was a it was a way of life, and it made our life better. We had some, uh, of course, even then they never did make a lot of money because, as I said, when they made records, they didn't. I don't think they even received a half a cent of record. Mm -hmm. You take they made their they started out in 1927, as you know. That was a depression. Mm -hmm. That was that was a hard time. It was uh, amazing that people bought any records at all, the way it was. But they did. I don't care how poor you are or how little you have, you've got to have some kind of something right. to um, take your mind off of, um, well, if it's nothing but go to an ice cream supper or get out or go to church or go visit or this or that. You can't dwell entirely your whole life on your hardships. You have to have an outlet, mm -hmm. outlet let's put it that way. And theirs was music, as I said. That was uh, that was a way of life, and uh, it was just part. It was just part of growing up, just like church was part of growing up. I knew as certain as Sunday come that I was going to Sunday school. And uh, now it's different. Um, they people go to church, but they do, they don't go as much as they did. I don't go as much as I did when I was a child. We went then mm -hmm. because they, that was where they wasn't nowhere else much mm -hmm. to go. And we know we had to go because they said we was going, so that's what we done. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was, you know what I heard the other day? And it just shocked me to death because I'd never heard it and I didn't even realize they existed. I was listening to radio in Jackson or, or Whitesburg and there's this, this fellow that has a bluegrass show and he really, really knows old time music and country music and bluegrass music and he came up with a record that had a radio show on it with your mom and dad and I guess Maybell and uh, Jimmy Rogers and it was really a nice show I was just so amazed I couldn't yeah. I couldn't believe it was on radio right now and I guess they distribute that kind of thing now yes yeah. you know. well now you know they um I can remember when we got our first radio I can remember when the I'm 57 years old. I can remember when we got the electric lights. Mm -hmm. and I can remember when the old radio was run by batteries before mm -hmm. we had the electricity to run it with. Mm -hmm. And it was really some sort of entertainment. Mm -hmm. It was really something. And then to hear my mother and daddy come over that, they went to uh, Bristol. The first, uh, first time they ever sung over a radio was over WOPI. Mm -hmm. They made a. They used to have a farm and fun time show up there. Of course, they went. They didn't get paid anything for it. But then they went to work um, on um, for Consolidated Drug. You know, they worked in Texas during uh, oh the year they worked out there during thirty eight and thirty nine and. Were they working up. across the border then? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. when they worked across the border. And then it really was something to sit here in Virginia and turn the dial and listen to your daddy and mother. And that turn made you, Mexico. Yeah, it made you really proud. Well, that's my mother and daddy. Yeah. Mother. That's great. Yeah. That's great. It really, it really was. And then, you know, they got into making the transcriptions like <coughs> they're not made on the tapes. There's not tapes. It wasn't tapes then. It was made on great big discs, you know, mm -hmm. great big discs. Right. Made in 30-minute programs right. and then played all over them border stations all over Texas and out in the West. 
and they were paid a certain amount a week. The first year they were there in person on that big radio station, XERA. Mm -hmm. Then the next year they went made they made those disc transcriptions. Mm. And we would work different programs. Maybe we would go work six thirty minute programs a day. Maybe we'd work two or three days out of the week, mm -hmm. sometimes several hours, you know, mm -hmm. pri practically all day long. Uh -huh. Were you working with them then? I worked out there for one year. Uh -huh. When I was 16, I worked out there, and Helen, uh -huh. June, and Anita worked. Uh -huh. They were, I was 16, they were 6, 8, and 12. Mm -hmm. And um, we worked out, we worked out there, and uh, for a while they took us with them. Well, you all go through and come in the back door. I'm sorry. It's all right. That's no problem. Just, that's all right. Just, this is this isn't this is videotape. It's real cheap. We can we can make all the uh -huh. mistakes we want to on this. Okay. One. Are you fat fish that cigarette over there? Yeah. I want that ashtray to light then. <laughs> uh, well, did uh. So how long did you work with the Carter family? I mean, well, I worked in Texas for for one year, you know. Mm -hmm. I worked in Texas for one year. And then, of course, I was took with them when I was all I started. When I was six years old, they took me and I, they let me dance. And then I went, um, of course, I, me and Helen worked together, mm -hmm. you know, the off and on when we were young. And then I filled in some with... Uh, took along when Maybelle couldn't go or Mother couldn't go. Aunt Sylvie went some. Uncle Grant worked some. And I just more or less kind of filled in off and on. I really never did do, um, outside of working in Texas, I never done, devoted much of my time to music till uh -huh. in later years, uh -huh. till after Rita and Dale and my children were pretty well grown. Yeah. I started out again, yeah. let's say. Raising kids is a pretty full-time job yeah, itself, isn't it? Yeah, I had a pretty hard time, let's put it that way. 